What's up everyone, this is Share talking, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about some news. We have Romancing Festival Rock Bouquet with the latest version of Rock Bouquet and also the return of Sage of the Island of Beginnings. This is a node event that we can get this version of Golden Ball. So very good for those that miss it out, but here we will be talking about new stuff and this banner here is Time Displaced. It should not be released today, but it's not also too much into the future. It brings Rock Bouquet, uh, Victoria, Onyx, and Rabbit. All these characters are from Romance in Saga 2. And if you don't remember, well, Victoria is a character that has some relation to Emerald. They are a class of characters from Romance in Saga 2. Onyx has relation to Emerald, and Rabbit has relation to Cat, and they can interchange skills and inheritances in the game. So I'll be going to Reddit now. Okay, so here we are on a post by Hands43 on Reddit. Thank you so much for doing this awesome job. The video for the information is here on the top. And Rock Bouquet is the first character. She got buffed in intelligence, love, and charisma. But the skills, not so much. Only the third one. First passive gives her 1 BP and has very small heal on the end of a turn. It's good because on farming she actually gets to 18 BP by turn 3, allowing some interesting combinations like so Freeze plus twice and some other stuff. Then the second one, when she attacks, she has a 37% chance to charm targets and also recover BP. It's separated, she can trigger both or just one. Uh, so it's pretty nice since the last version of Vampire Lady before the Global X version had only the first part of the passive, and now she gets even more with a chance to recover BP. And then Fired Up 6 to increase damage by 30%. With two passives related to BP, she can use cheap attacks and then stronger attacks later if she wants. Starting with the first one, actually, with only one BP, you do D damage, Shadow and Cold, with a chance to debuff Agility. That is insanely good and one of the best skills with Cheap Coast. The good thing is that she's now a debuffer and can be used and save BP to use a nuke later. You can start the fight, keep using this, and then when you reach overdrive, you do her strongest attacks, like even skill number 3 or her enraged squid from the Perfector version. The second skill is a 5 AP AoE attack with only code this time and grants morale down to the target that lasts for 3 turns. This decreases the damage on the source by 15%. It's the same skill that Melissa has access to. I think it's more useful when there are multiple enemies in a fight. It will help you receive less damage. And because it's 3 turns and she gets 4 BP, she can keep casting this forever. In the future, this type of skills will be more important than it's right now, and there will be more characters that can do something similar. But morale down does not stack. The same type of uh, debuff will only keep the last version applied. Now for skill number 3, we have a 10 BP attack that is A power and now fast and global with shadow and lightning damage. That is very similar to, well, Maximus, but Maximus has a debuff to will and bu uh, debuff to the party will as well with his attack. This one does not have that, it's neutral. But it has an effect, it will try to charm the enemies with medium chance. Her intelligence is high, but it will take the charisma status into operation when trying to inflict charm. Look on how high this is. That means that if the enemy has no resistance, it will be charmed. If it has resistance, well, it will still be charmed with this attack. It's the strongest chance to inflict charm besides single target attacks. So, right now we don't have much usage for Charm, hardly if ever an enemy can be Charmed in a situation where it matters, but in the future we have Remembrance Battle where you can Charm enemies and she's going to be a good character. Uh, but then, in the Staff Remembrance there are plenty of options to deal with content, you don't really need this type of stuff, but, well, it's pretty unique to be honest. I feel like they lost the chance to give her a passive to buff her intelligence. This is the last version of Rock Bouquet in JP, but just because we don't see it here, I believe they will release yet another in the future, either Global X or JP based, because uh, there is a problem. Sometimes we face a boss that has insanely high agility or will, and it's hard to debuff or even land attacks. At least her agility and intelligence together is not much of a problem, but I have cases where my Shira was missing on turn 1, so have to remind this thing. 
you are using a buffer to buff her intelligence and agility, it just fixes itself, but if you're not, you have to consider. Now the second character is Rabbit. Like I say, this is the same as Cat, Summer Cat, and all versions, they can interchange skills. And for status, they buffed her agility for 110%, that's amazing. Her intelligence got up to 100 as well. She received more buffs than Rock Bouquet, buffs that matter more even. For uh, first, her passive number one buffs her agility and STR by 5% and gives her 1 BP. Like I said in the past, you don't find many passives that buff agility to values that are high. So 5% is what you get here and 1 BP really helps her with something later. Uh, passive number two, she gets uh, 1 BP and heals as well on the end of a turn. So she starts, get 1 BP and in the end gets another. So 5 BP a turn and she also heals. Now the last one is hyper overtension, so good for moments where you need overdrive. And she is really use it for damage on overdrive in boss fights. Apart from that, she's going to use a skill that comes from Halloween Cat. Fellini Dance, it's a 6 PP skill that debuffs STR and intelligence together. And now that she gets 5, she can use this almost all the time, but can at least use it many times in a row. And when you get to overdrive, you can choose another attack. That I'll explain here. So it's a pretty good combination. And I know that the buff strategies are not the same as before. Many enemies have the five weakness. But if we count turns and understand the break point where it uh, starts using wake, the five weaknesses. Because actually, bosses don't like to be debuffed more than 30%, for example. Uh, this will work well in some situations. But the recent event for Global. Uh, the bosses didn't have the fire weakness, so something to remember when thinking about the future. Now, uh, skill number one is a 2 BP attack with fast that deals blunt damage and gives ward down. This will increase the damage output of everyone, it decreases the resistance of the enemy by 15%, so actually pretty nice since she gets 5 BP, this is actually kind of cheap, it's free, but usually when you have overdrive, for example, and you want to go first to increase the damage of your characters, since you will not have enough BP to nuke, you have been using Fellini Dance if you have. And then skill number two, it's a 6 BP blunt attack that has a chance to debuff intelligence when the attack lands. And it's as power with 6 BP and debuffs intelligence by 20%. In the future, we'll get Submission Plus that is very similar to this, but debuffs STR, and she can amplify from one of her styles. Another very good usage, it's a character with high agility and high intelligence, can debuff and choose between intelligence and STR. If the enemy does not have the 5 weaknesses, this works pretty well. 20% instead of 15, however, the increases and she can keep casting while doing damage. Now, skill number 3, she has a 9 BP AoE attack with blunt and heat. For 9 BP, it's pretty nice, but Sadly, martial arts units are not so strong when farming and she only has hyper over tension to increase the damage. Okay, so at least we have hurricane formation that now takes them to max potential and she can be used for stages where you open with AoE and then you need to use single target on the second wave. She will increase the damage of everyone because it's skill number one, so not so bad. If you don't have Fellini Dance from Inheritance, you can just use this attack here, the second one, and Submission Plus in the future. Still has some usage, but it's not so essential. There are plenty of characters that can debuff Intelligence and STR now. Then the next one, Victoria, and she is just like Minerva, a character from Romance in Saga 2 that uses Spears, and they can interchange between Inheritances. Her STR is not so high, 102%, because she's actually a defensive unit. You can see by the status, 102% endurance and 99 will now. That's increase it from the JP counterpart. Next rate is on average levels, uh, agility a little beyond what I expected for a tank. And love and charisma are pretty average as well. The status distribution here is actually pretty good. And then for passive one, we reduce damage by 10% and get to BP on the start of battle. The second one, she has a 37% chance to cover for a surviving ally when it's taking damage. And then she will decrease the damage even further uh, when she is covering. And then High Protect Tension gives her a 30% damage reduction and 20% increase in damage. It's the only damage passive, but because we have weapons with such a high power, 
we don't need many things when we are talking about a tank. Okay, skill number one was changed and now she has Glitter Shell, a 0 BP attack that you can find on metric number four, that gives her Guard Up Small, decreasing damage by 12% for two turns. If you have her passive style, you can also inherit Piercing Slash, that buffs STR, so you buff STR, use Guard Up, and then you can decide to nuke later. Well, the skill number two is an AoE attack with C Power, AoE, Pierce and Lightning. Pierce and Lightning is good because it's not so easy to find, and she can be used to attack three times over when farming because she starts with 12. It's pretty similar to Primera and also Alosis on this regard, so at least will be easy to farm. And then skill number three, we get a 4S attack. This is the same attack that we got in the past with Honeyball, and it's now amplified to 4S damage and will also recover HP by medium attack, very close to 1000. So, if you are in a boss fight, you open with Glitter Shell. If you have Minerva, you buff your SDR, and then when it's time to do Overdrive, use this attack. Or when you need to heal, or when you are too close to 20. Very nice, because the damage is high. Very high, even with only one damage passive, if you get a very powerful spear. Pretty good. Now, something about the cover mechanic, it was launched with Julian, but it then it got into disuse simply because he was not tanky enough and formations that we had back then was not so good as well. Now we have plenty of different formations and in the future we get another character that can cover and that one is Father with Mask and you can even use two cover tanks together. It will work better because these characters offer more value than just tanking. So she even has a higher chance to cover than him. And the most important thing is that if you are using a formation where she's already being target, the cover is just extra. She gets 30% damage reduction plus 10 and then plus 12 with the first skill. That means that she barely takes damage. Look at her endurance and will. Very tanky character. Moving on to Onyx. Onyx is just like Emerald and they can interchange skills. And she was the one that got the biggest buffs. I guess that's because we have Global X Emerald and many more things to inherit between the characters. Now her intelligence 113%, that's pretty good. Passive 1 increases her intelligence by 15 and gives 1 BP. This is amazing. The Global X version gets 20%, but she's more defensive than this one that's actually more offensive. Then we have High Quick Tension, getting as much as 35% increase in damage when attacking weak targets, and Fired Up increasing 60%. So 65, even higher than Subir, and buffing intelligence before attacking. So the damage will be insane and depends on the attacks that she has access to, but at least this is a good thing. Skill number one, she gets a deep power attack that's only hit and has a chance to rebuff agility. Yeah, it's just like Rock Bouquet attack, but in this case it's just hit. But she's better since she buffs her intelligence, the chance to debuff will be much higher. And for 8 BP, skill number 2 is a random attack that hits between 1 to 6 times. If you hit 6 times, you're going to get like very high damage, but then you can just hit once. It's a gamble, it can be weak or strong, at least it was reduced from JP. And skill number 3 is a 10 BP AoE attack with heat, plain, just damage, but very strong. Like I said, she can just buff her intelligence before she attacks and gets BP. She can also import Firestorm, plus that attack got buffed in global, that buffs agility and can be used three times. And now you can also open with skill number three, skip one turn and use the AoE Firestorm on turn three. There are plenty of interesting inheritance, like inheriting skill number three from her Global X Summer Style, that debuffs agility twice and then change between that attack and skill number one, that debuffs agility with one BP. So she becomes the best single target agility buffer in the game. But she's pretty fragile if you look on her endurance, but can be working on. Global X style has better sustain. She even has a damage reduction passive. But if you have both, you can change depending on the situation. Since this one is the one against plus BP. Yeah. Okay, so um even saying all of this about his characters, I have to say that this banner does not offer as much value as some others in the past. I can compare this to the latest banner with Romancing Saga 3 styles. But there you have 5, here we have 4. There you had Black, a character that barely offers anything besides, well, Remembrance. And here we have characters that have purposes. 
If you have versions of Rock Bouquet, you now get more utility. But right now, I don't think she has such a strong future because, well, she does not get a version that buffs her own intelligence and, well, nothing much besides what we already have in the game. Rabbit becomes much better if you have Halloween Cat so that you have this interesting cycle of debuffing two status with a guarantee and you can use it multiple times and also increase damage potential when you need. And Victoria is a defensive unit that also benefits from having the past version of Minerva with uh, tank capabilities with cover and high damage potential. At Onyx, it's now the best single target agility debuffer with very good damage in farming. But none of these characters are essential. If you are a veteran, you can skip them. If you are a new player, it's a good moment to gamble and try to do some multi-pulls to see if you get something. And I have to say that even veterans can try and do some pulls here. You don't need to go to PD if you don't want to, because these characters uh, may not be worked to PD. We just got many banners right now, and it's better to maybe even wait one week to see what's coming. We don't know, this banner came out of nowhere and may change, well, our plans. So this banner will probably receive between a bronze and silver award. I'll give a better look on them. But this is a preview. The review comes tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching this video. What do you think about these characters? Do you plan to summon for them? Please see here in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope to see you soon in the next one. Bye.